when you complete making an info path form and uh, the logic that you need to be in an info path form and you're ready to share it with other people so they can take this form template and start filling it out with their form data. You have a bunch of different options of how you can share this form. Well, you can share directly by putting it on a network share somewhere, putting on your intranet, which is running SharePoint or not running SharePoint. You can send it to them directly through email, etc. In this uh, demonstration, what I'm gonna show you is how you can share your InfoPath form directly through a form library in, in a SharePoint. So I have this form ready to be deployed now. I'm gonna go to File, Publish, and choose the SharePoint server option. It asks me exactly where do you wanna save it. Well, I'm gonna to go to my browser and take the URL for my site. In this case, it's the IT site. I'll copy it, take it back to InfoPath, and I'll paste it here. Control V. Next. In this wizard, this second step here asks me how do you want to publish this form? Do you want to publish it directly into a form library, which is what I intend to do in here? Do you, pub do you intend to um, wrap it into a content type? If you wrap the form template into a content type, which is the second option, then you can use this content type at the site level at anywhere within any library uh, on your site. And then later, if you wanted to change the form, you just change it directly within the content type, and then anywhere this content type is being used, the form has the updates, which is a great option to have. But it's the advanced option, which I'm not covering right now. And the third option, which is also advanced, is having an administrator, a server administrator, approve your form template. So you make the form template, you put it out there somewhere on a file share or some location, maybe you e even email it to the administrator, and that administrator takes a look at the form template, makes sure everything is fine, and then that, that administrator goes ahead and uploads the form template, the InfoPath form template, directly through central administration under the forms services option, he or she uploads it there and makes it available to a site collection. Once they make it available to a site collection, it appears as a content type. So that is the process of making an administrator approved form template. If you're making a form template that has code behind it, or it is a uh, mobile, mobile enabled template, then you have no option but to choose the administrator approved form template. Otherwise, you do have the option to choose it or not to choose it. In this case, I'm choosing the form library option, clicking on next. And I want to make a new form library, so that's what I'll choose right now, a new form library. And my library name here is going to be expense reports. Please fill out this form to request reimbursement. Next, all right, this is a very, very important screen here. The top part over here says that if there are any fields within this form that you wish to make into columns into the form library, go ahead and uh, declare them here. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'll click on add, declare my employee name field, department, and you have to do it one by one in this case. Notice that when I choose a, a field which has two words and uh, you know they were joined together, it automatically knows that these are two words and it puts a space in between them. Okay, let me take the final total and also take the um, department head. The bottom part, which I will not be using right now, but I'm gonna tell you about it, the bottom part says that if you intend to make this form template later available in an InfoPath form web part, which is new in SharePoint 2010, then in that InfoPath form web part, when this form is being shown, I'm going to take the parameters that you've added here and make them available as parameters that you can use in your web part connections. So if you take, for example, the, um, the employee name here and make that a parameter in here by clicking, clicking on add. 
that employee name field then becomes available as a connection parameter within the form web part that that uh, this form would be shown under. So this is truly a great advanced functionality to have. Click on next for right now and I'm going to click on publish. Okay, all done. Click on close. Now I'm going to refresh my IT site here. Notice that you have the expense reports library. When you go to the expense reports library, you can click on add document and it knows exactly which document to bring up because that is a form template that you have just uh, created and applied to this library. I'll fill in some information. Any logic that you have set in the um, InfoPath form template is all available here. Expense date, let's go ahead and set it to something. Okay, phone number. All right, department head should be populating automatically when I choose a department. Wonderful, IT is a net fielding, sales is Robert Leota. And this is all when I've configured this form first, I made all these rules. Okay, flight, one flight, quantity is 400 bucks. There we go, final total is being populated and the subtotal is being populated. So the, the form is working great. And now to save the form, uh, so what I'm gonna be doing is save an instance of the filled out form in the library. You click on save obviously, name the form something. And save. Okay, then you gotta close it to get back. Notice that uh, the fields that you had um, made into columns, it's also called the field promoted into columns. For example, department, employee name, email, expense date, all the data from those fields appear here in the columns. And now if you wanted to later, you could filter or sort on these fields, just like you sort on any other fields or any other columns in a library. And that's a great way to surface up your data from your form directly into your library. And also note that the ASIF expense report in this case, this is a XML file. So once it saves the actual form, the instance of the filled out form, it saves it as a .xml file. So you saw here now how easy it is to take a form template in InfoPath and publish it to a form library in SharePoint. One last thing to keep in mind here is that the uh, when you click on Add Document, and the way I showed you, uh, the form came up in the browser. It's only gonna come up in the browser if you have SharePoint Server Enterprise running. It will not come up in the browser if you don't have Enterprise running. It's gonna instead try to open up within InfoPath, InfoPath Filler application, and if you don't have the InfoPad filler application on your desktop or laptop that you're trying to open it from, then it will give you an error. Uh, so keep in mind that unless you have SharePoint Server Enterprise, your forms will not be showing up in the browser. It will show up in the InfoPad client. And if you don't have an InfoPad client, then it will show you an error.